Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and... And my name's Amata. Yeah, pretty much. Welcome to Things About Tangents. Hmm. So, have you been playing much this week? No. <laughs> Short, concise answer, nothing at all? Uh, other than the gaming night that you and I and a couple of our friends had yesterday, which was basically Retro Saturn... And if you haven't tried, by the way, Death Tank... Yeah, we played Death Tank, which is pretty fun. If you haven't tried multiplayer Death Tank, like, three players is minimum, but really it needs to be four. Yeah, it was... It was Plus, it goes up to seven, if memory serves. Seven, Jesus. Yeah. I, I'm not quite sure... I mean, you're going to... Imagine using Death's Head on, set, on, like, six other players. It would just be like... Yeah, I mean, De De Death Tank is, is quite fun, we'll say. And we also played... Guardian, Guardian Heroes. Heroes, which is basically like, oh god, what's going on? Help me with my medicine simulator. And before you got there, uh, we were all playing Street Fighter Alpha 3. Oh, I missed out. Yeah, and <laughs> I think that was about it. I don't think we, I don't think no, we that's it. That's, that's pretty much all we played, because it, it wasn't a particularly late one. We just gamed for a few hours, and then yeah. I headed back and watched some TV. Yeah. Well, I say TV, I watch things on, on Netflix. <laughs> That's about as close as I come to TV these days. Yeah, which was person of interest for you, if memory serves. Yes. yes. And you are now the completionist. Yes, I have completed person of interest. I'm very sad. But it was good. It's a good show. It is the good. Hmm. Very good, actually. Uh, as for me, I haven't played a huge amount. been playing some more Doom. I still need to finish it, mind. But I'm pretty close to the end, I think. Well, if you're... In hell for the fifteen thousandth time. I'm, I'm back in hell, for, I think, for the final time. Now. Someone in the comments I know is going to be like, "Spoilers! You, you didn't. You, you told us you go to hell and doom. It's, it's a doom game. This kind of goes without saying." Other spoilers, guys. You shoot monsters. You shoot demons in the face a lot. Yeah. I know it's massive spoiler town right now. Another, another one as well as it's first person. <laughs> And there's blood in it. Yeah, there's a lot of gore. Uh, you can stamp demons in the face, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, you can also snap their neck, punch them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dealer's choice, really. Yeah. I, wish, I do wish you had more control over the executions, though. Well, it, how what angle you approach them from is about it. Yeah, and also obviously based upon the monster. Yes. Anyway. Um, other than that, I finished Inside. I don't want to talk too much about that because that particular part hasn't been uploaded yet. Plus, well, you and don't want course, to give away spoilers. No, I'm not going to spoil the ending. I'm just going to say that it was a very, very good game. And uh, I would highly recommend it. Rating out of 10. Gif. Eight, I'd say. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty interesting game. Actually, I really liked it. And there's another secret ending, but I'm not going to bother to unlock it's that. A secret. secret. Actually, I'll tell you one thing I did watch. Oh, yeah? The Batman, the killing joke. Thoughts? I'll be honest, I didn't read the comic when it was hot. So in other words, like I kind of missed out on the hype. I, I checked it out later. So you have read it, just not when it first came out. Precisely. <clears throat> okay. Um, I, I actually really liked it, the movie. Because it's got some mixed reviews. One of the... One of the criticisms, I, I don't want to give it away in case you're, you're one of the three people in the planet who don't know what the the uh, plot is if you're interested in it. But basically, towards the very end, Joker's giving a lecture to Batman and some pe people were criticising apparently the speed he gave the narration compared to what they perceived it to be based upon the web comp, based upon the comic. So in other words, he, they felt that the, sh the speech was almost cut short. But... The thing is, like in in combat, like in a panel, you can have, like between each frame of animation, if you will, you can have like between each panel, you can have like fifteen thousand words of dialogue because technically time stops. Well, it doesn't work like that in you know live action because obviously people are going to be fighting, countering, punching, laughing the smack of down. Mm. So I actually felt it worked really well. I I really liked it, and it was still pretty damn bloody, like. I wouldn't suggest show it. Well, actually, personally, I don't really care. So show it to a five-year-old. But you know, it probably wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I have yet to see it or actually read the original comic. So 
Alright, well, you should, know. you know, do that. I will at some point, I'm sure, but, yeah, not not, not yet. Yeah, and another thing as well is the new trailer for Westworld looks pretty good as well. Yeah, that looks interesting, actually. I watched the movie back when I was really young. Uh, I have no idea how old I was, but back in the day, there was, like, a special where they were doing old sci-fi movies on TV, and I watched it then. And the movie was pretty good. Obviously, I think it was made back in the 70s. Don't quote me on that. It was 60s or 70s. So it aged even by the time I watched it. Um, but the movie, uh, sorry, the TV show, which is made by HBO, looks really cool. So uh, I mean, I don't think HBO made a bad show. Like, even if the show isn't for you, you can't really argue that it's bad, if that makes sense. No, they're they, like, make, they make good stuff. Yeah. To be fair... I think TV now is really caught up with a lot of movies. I mean, to be honest, a lot of the best content, I would say, is not in films, but in TV. There are the odd film. Like, for example, you know, if you've got like, the latest Marvel blockbuster, it's very hard to put that into TV. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Marvel, Marvel movies are great and all. They're, they're fun, they're entertaining. But I would not put them in my best films of all time list. Some of them are. Because, I don't know, I, I would personally would put films like Old Boy and uh, yeah. Battle Royale and uh, yeah, but that... Irreversible and stuff like that in there. You know, that's, those are the kind of films that I while would I put like in the Bat- top ten list. While I like Battle Royale, I also think that it's a bit... Like, to me, it's... Like, the story has been done a lot of other things by now as well. Yeah, but not when it came out. I, I'm not disagreeing, but for Especially me... Especially not when the original manga was written. Well. Like, I watched I watched Battle Royale quite quite <laughs> some time ago. like Not on release, but quite a long no, time no, ago. No, no, I didn't see it when it came out. I mean, I got it on... I can't remember where I first saw it. It was probably in college or somewhere around that time. And then I bought it on DVD like a couple of years later, so I definitely didn't see it when it came out. But it's a timeless film, I think. I think it's good, but I also... I just, I just think like for the real... Some of the more cleverer stuff, some of the stuff that's a bit more, um, what's what I'm looking for, a bit more risky, I guess, because Hollywood obviously is remiss to take risks a lot of the time. So you find a lot of the more riskier, weird stuff on on TV, like Stranger Things, for example. Yeah, well, look how many shows, uh, so t- TV. Um... Yeah, I know it took them a while to get to get made, but that would not have been a film. Yeah, because they kept being turned down by large production studios. That's what I'm saying. So you know. If you want to find the really interesting stuff, there is some interesting films. I'm not saying there's no interesting films because, of course, that's silly to say. I'm just saying a lot of it is TV nowadays, and uh, Hollywood is kind of falling a bit behind on that in that regard, in my opinion. Although I must say, I'm looking forward to the new Star Trek. Yeah, no, so I'm saying there's not there's... the movie, the the show. Oh, they're right, making sorry, a new, sorry. They're making a new uh, Star Trek um, series, and it's looking to be really good. I'm quite a Trek. I wouldn't say I'm a is massive. Is that going to be uh, JJ verse then, or? You know, to be honest, I've deliberately not researched anything about it. Fair enough. I want to go in, not... I, all I know is the time period is going to be about... I, I don't know exact time period, but as far as I'm aware, it's roughly the time period of Kirk. So it's not like... And that did get some people upset, because some people were hoping it was going to be like after Voyager. Because after Voyager, they came back from um, the Delta Quadrant with like masses of technology... Uh, they had like huge not amounts of uh, extra trek they got from the Borg and from other alien species and basically propelled them quite considerably into the future. So technically, I think, someone let me know in the comments, but if memory serves, if you keep going like another 50, 100 years or whatever into the future of that timeline, you start getting into like time travel and really advanced stuff. <laughs> so I'm going to, some people were quite disappointed they didn't pursue that. But I'm going to assume they didn't because it starts to get really like difficult for the average person to. Uh... I was going to say that sounds like it would be kind of convoluted. To be honest, they probably, at least for the start, want to keep it very simple and then maybe delve into that sort of thing later on down the line. Do you know that's one of the reasons? Uh, did you ever watch any of the Star Star Treks, like the original series? No. Basically, they use star dates. Yep. Now in J.J. Abrams, they do it differently. So it'll be like 22, I can't remember the date, but let's say 22, 72.55. So the first four numbers represent the year, and the last two represent the the day and the month. So for example, if it was like 2200.01, that would be the 1st of January, the year 2200, right? Yeah. In the original series and they have somewhat changed it around for Voyager and so on what they did is basically 
they deliberately obfuscated it as much as possible so you can get an exact idea of when the date was. And the idea was to make it as like, it could be 400 years into the future or it could have been like 100 years into the future. Hmm. Anyway, that's w- way off topic. Yeah, that's that's quite a tangent even for us. So, enough about TV and film. This is a gaming thing. Games. Yeah. Well, we talked about games. We talked about, like, you know... I talked about Inside for two minutes. Yeah, and I talked about the the um, the power of, uh, you know, Death Tank. What more do you want? Death Tank is great. And the, uh, did, you hear the, did you hear the intro music for it? Not last time, but the last time we played it. Anyway, oh, good times. So, I feel like we've got an old school flavour going on here. So, let's start with the rumours surrounding Duke Nukem 3D, shall we? Out to the King, baby. Yeah, exactly. Basically, there was. Do you know what time a... it is, by the way? <laughs> Basically... Do you know what time it is? No! But it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And all that gum, yes. yes. Goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, basically, there there's a countdown on the Duke Nukem website, and it says happy 20th anniversary or something like that, so there's something happening in a few days, I can't remember, it was like a week when I did the video, but it's a couple of days ago, so it's like four or five days now, I've had to guess off the top of my head, um, and there was a leak of some screenshots, which basically point to something called Duke Nukem 3D World Tour, or something along those lines. So it's a remaster or a remake or a reimagining or something of the, you know, Duke Nukem 3D game. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm not terribly convinced it's true. <laughs> Why is that? Because the screenshots don't look that great. It depends what engine it is made from. I mean, if it's the original engine or a... Yeah, but the thing is, there's mods that make it look better than these screenshots. That's why I'm like... Mm. Well, leak screenshots, how early were they in the build, when is the game being released? Yeah, I suppose there is that to consider. And for all um, we know, that that's a retro mode that was built into yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah, that's, that's very true, that's very true, but we don't know if it's a full remake or just like a a remaster, quote-unquote, with extra content added in. It's probably the second one, because the first one would take work. <laughs> But um, according to the leak as well, it's going to have like the original content, but they're going to, it's kind of like a remix. They're going to add some new levels in as well, and kind of mix things up. So it's not going to be exactly the same as the old game. You know what's rather interesting about the original Duke Nukem 3D? What's that? Because obviously beforehand it was in 2D. <clears throat> uh, I, I personally think the first, the first, first series of levels, especially the first level, are some of the best designed in any video game. Yeah, a lot of people very much praise the level design of uh, 3D. You know, it's like, what's rather interesting about it is, like, at the very start, you can go through the game, like, that you could go through the first few levels and pick up very few weapons, like, you probably pick up the shotgun, maybe. But if you really know what you're doing, within the space of about one minute after starting the level, like, you know you start on the rooftop, which, because your, you know, ride gets blown up, mm-hmm. and then you, you can go down... You've got a series of gas canisters that you explode. If you head right, I believe, you can actually climb up... A, I can't remember if it's a dumpster or what. And you climb up onto the basic side of a building. And you can get an RPG within about one minute of starting the game, if you know what you're doing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it's just like... It's it's that encouragement of the level design of the game. It's really... Well, the, oops, sorry. Those, those old games were um, very about exploration and finding stuff. Yeah, so I just think it's quite interesting that they're, they're remaking it. I personally am very... I wouldn't say excited about it, because well, it's, I, it's not enough information to be excited about. Yeah, I mean, as I said, there is a countdown. Do, 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 do. Exactly. So we'll find out soon enough what they're counting down to. Um, but it could be that, or it could be not that. Hmm. We'll have to see. But, uh... I don't know. I'm dubious because you know, you know, you know what happened last time the Duke game came out. It might have been different developers, though. <laughs> no, it's Gearbox still. They still own the IP. Yeah, but I'm saying it might be different developers. Like, the actual team working on it might oh, be poss- different. Possibly, yeah, possibly. It's like me saying to you, well, it's a Sony studio. <laughs> or, you know, it's the guys at Capcom. Yeah, it's the guys who made Street Fighter for free worked at Capcom, but they also 
did Street Fighter 3 and they also did uh, Street Fighter 4 and they did Street Fighter 5 and the team that did Street Fighter 5 have done really well. Oh wait, what's the opposite of really well? <laughs> Abysmally and faintly? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so that's that. Anyway. Do you want to talk about Zen? Sure. Please enlighten us. Well, first of all, plug, 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 working on Zen part two of my analysis, plug, plug, plug. Mm-hmm. And I've actually got all the windows open now, so I've been typing. I'm already like 700 words in, and I'm only about a quarter of the way through, so it's going to be long, and it's going to be hard. That's what she said. Mm. She has actually multiple... T- well, I've had several women say that, yeah. Mm. Pretty much all women, actually. All women ever have said that? Well, no, because I haven't slept with about 4 billion women. That would be very impressive even for me, even if I lasted like an average of like 20 minutes. Someone do the bloody math on that! <laughs> <laughs> I really can't be bothered. <laughs> I don't think that's possible to sleep with that many people. No, you can probably. I don't know if you did like an hour, let's say like it, let's say you did twenty minutes per person on an average. You and gotta it, count in recovery time. Yeah, that's what I was about to do. And let's say you've got an hour of recovery time. Let's say you're trying to sleep, and I imagine you'd probably want to eat as well. Yeah, there's like toilet breaks, food breaks, stuff like that, sleep. So let's say that on average you're able to have sex eight hours a day. Yes. Every day. Yes. So, realistically, 20 minutes per person, right? Yeah. So, you're looking at, theoretically, at 24 people, at best, a day. But then you've got to count the soreness factor. But let's assume that you had, like, a bionic peen. Anyway, this is getting way off topic. Yes. Zen. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were talking about, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So, basically... um, AMD are still being rather boastful when it comes to Zen, of course. And we all saw the benchmarks now where it's pipped, and I do mean pipped, the 6900K to the post by about two seconds using Blender. If, assuming they're running at the same clock speed, there are still a hell of a lot of questions like, is it going to be just in a couple of applications Zen runs in front? Were AMD being very selective? What's the final clock speeds of Zen even? For example, Currently, the, the ES, the engineering samples, are running at like 3 gigahertz. But what's the final clock speed? The AMD being ultra-conservative? Is it going to run at like 4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz? Is it going to run at 3.2? We don't know. And obviously, it's going to be a base clock and turbo clock. But let's assume... I'm only focused on turbo because realistically, that's the, that's the, main, that's the main number. So what's the final speed? I don't know. However, we do know that it's going to be released in high numbers by the first quarter of next year. Um, that's what Lisa Sue has said. So, And it's also in their financial reports as well. So it's going to be really interesting. And on a similar topic, Vega has definitely been confirmed for 2017 first half, no date. So you could take that as like, you know, 1st of January 2017. You could take it as bloody May. It's up to you, really. Um... And that does coincide rather nicely with the abundance of HBM2. And they've also said that Navi is going to be released in 2018, which is the successor to Vega. So there's a lot of questions like, is Vega still going to be based on the same architecture as Polaris, which is uh, GCM 4.0? Or is it going to be some intermittent changes? So, for example, it could be almost seen as a 0.1 incremental upgrade. So are we going to see, for example, slight clock speed increases? Are we going to see improvements to the IPC? Are we going to see changes to like the cache or whatever? And even if not, we assume that it's going to be like double the number of compute units. And because there was a leak concerning Vega, a very early one, that touted and pegged the uh, GPU to have like 64 CUs. So it's looking to be quite monstrous. Um, and the next card, which is Navi... All they've said, and I have asked a couple of folks at AMD and they're being really tight-lipped, because next-generation memory isn't really ambiguous. It's quite evident that it it was going to either be HBM3, which has been confirmed, or GDDR6. Well, actually, we thought it was 5X, but basically 5, 5X and 6 are each different memory standards. So we're assuming that Navi is going to be using HBM3 or... R6 or a combination of all of those but the big question is and this one I'm really curious about is it's a scalable architecture because the reason I'm very curious about that is it it brings a lot of questions into my mind based upon their 
recent forays into server technology and also they're saying that they want there are potential possibilities with additional custom socks which are obviously some chips like for the 360 uh, sorry the ps4 the xbox one the scorpio and what's really crazy is the fact that it's scalable now obviously it, technically the current chips are scalable because you can use like crossfire or you could use like sli if you're nvidia and they're scalable in the sense of you can stick number a different number of shaders on the chip so what is scalability in this sense because they didn't say that with their previous chips so i'm very curious what it means by scalability mm. um I, i'm very curious if it's going to be a certain technology coming into the desktop because AMD, I can't remember what it's called, but you know NVIDIA have that NV link? Yeah. Um, which is obviously primarily for like IBM powered servers. Yeah. I do wonder if scalability in this sense is going to be some different type of PCIe interface, some different connection. But all we can do is just wait, unfortunately, because they're being very, 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 very tired of it. Well, it's not even out till next year and it could no, be 2018. Early. Sorry, 2018. Yeah, and for Navi. Vega is 2017. Oh, I see. Sorry. Yeah, so they're definitely going to be tight-lived then because obviously they're focusing on Zen at the moment and uh, probably don't want any major details coming out about Navi for some time. Summit Ridge is looking really good, though, I've got to say, for Sweet. the desktop Zen. Cool. All right, so there's been a few things about the NX, so we should probably talk about that next. As you probably all seen the report, and obviously you have as well, Paul, that the NX is some sort of con console that you can also it can also like take out of a docking station and then uses a tablet sort of arrangement, but then it has controllers that pop out from the thing and everything else. Yeah, which obviously are almost plastic, and they use like the infrared camera yeah, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. Well, basically, there was another report that not only says again that yeah, this is uh, kind of true, and this apparently this leak comes from people who have leaked things successfully in the past um, they leaked the existence of Until Dawn Rush of Blood, that VR DLC thing they're doing so there is some you know, backbone to this basically these controllers for the NX are going to have sort of Wii like motion controls but also, yeah pretty much <laughs> I know you can't see you guys but he's like just sort of shaking with fear like no, no actually it was more disgust well, fear, disgust you know, you get the idea. Loathing. Yes. In Las Vegas. Um, not Never only that. Never seen that. Oh, I should watch it. So you know, even the, it, even the cover of the movie makes me just not want to watch, watch it. You should watch it. No. It's no. Good. You should watch it. No. Anyway. Not only that, it also has apparently finely tuned vibration so that... Uh, Is it supposed to be a sex aid? No. Okay. Although I'm sure it will be used as one. Basically, uh, it's going to be... Because they could actually get extra sales from that, I'm just <laughs> saying. Basically, the idea is it's going to be finely tuned to be different levels of vibration based upon the action. So, <laughs> say for example... <laughs> listen, say for example, if it rests on the vagina, it will no, no, play no, at this no, speed. No. <laughs> say, say you're catching a tennis ball. Okay, in game. okay. I, I immediately got... I, okay, I just want to point this out, right? There is going to be a clitoral stimulator thing, which is going to be uh, like an attachable thing for no, this device. It's hard, no, no it's not from Nintendo, but it'll be like an eBay. I guarantee it. Anyway, so say you're catching a tennis ball in game. Obviously, right. that's going to be a fairly soft vibration on the controller. <laughs> and then, um, but if you're being hit by a sword or something like that, obviously, it's going to be more. So if yeah. you can't see, if you're getting hit by a sword, I think the vibrations leads to your concerns. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically the idea of the controllers and um, it's also going to have a multi-touch touch screen you know what as soon as I say as vibration well. I just immediately get turned off I hate vibration in video games like it pisses me off it's there was it's for a while I think it was the PS3 yeah it was the PS3 Sony were like yeah we don't want to include uh, tactile feedback and it was vibration and everyone was getting upset and I'm like why it doesn't add realism. It's just something like buzzing. And I remember Tekken 3. Well, all, I think you should have it and then just have the option to turn it off if you don't oh, want it. God, I turn it off immediately. It's like on my preferences on every console, just off. In fact, there was one system. I, I think it was on the PS2. Certain games, you couldn't disable it. And you know what I ended up doing? I opened up the control and ripped out the motor. I was like, the benefit is it's also a lighter controller. <laughs> 
I mean, I can, I can definitely see the uh, usefulness of it if, it if they're going for motion control again, which I hope to God they're not because that needs to die a horrible, fiery death. Um, one of the issues with the Wii, as well as the fact that it needed an attachment to work as advertised, was also the fact that flailing your arms around wildly with no feedback is not really what I call immersive. No. So, tactile like feedback tra might help with that, but to be honest, they should just stop with motion control. But there's one argument to be made that it is kind of moving back in some ways because of VR, but that is because it helps VR. VR is one of the very few instances where motion control is actually a good thing. Because obviously it's more immersive for you to like raise your hand to raise a shield in VR, because we're using your motion control thing, than it is to just press B or whatever on the thumb on the on the controller. I think certain games it works. Like I would hate it in horror, for example. Yeah. Certain horror games. Yeah, like, for VR, motion control can really, really work to be more immersive, but that's because you're playing a VR game. It, 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 it kind of works with what you're doing, but if you're sitting in front of a TV, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, basically. I'm not overly keen on the idea of them continuing to push motion control, considering it's pretty much died you know what I think's apart quite, VR. You know what I think is absolutely ridiculous? What's that? Mr. Reggie decided to say that we need to do a better job at Explaining the NX. Yeah. Says nothing about the NX. Yeah, that's that's the it's thing. Like, like, so it's like it's almost September, right? The thing is out in March. So what, five, six months from now, roughly? Yeah. Something like that. But you know what? We don't even know what it is. We don't know what it is. The problem is, for me, here, here's I've got two. I've got two qualms. Okay. Right. I have some qualms. Okay. Right. The first qualm. Is that if they're releasing it in March, let's just say they're releasing it mid March, uh -huh. which coincides with my birthday, so Gev. Um, is first of all, how many people are going to have. You're going to have to convince people to not spend their money, especially if they're on a finite budget, all their money at Christmas. Because if the Neo is released, and even if it's not, you're still comparing, you're still competing against the Xbox One S, the PlayStation 4 Slim, the potential of the Neo, the PS4 VR, and so many games that it's quite possibly impossible to complete them all. And the other qualm I have, the other major concern is, uh, and I could do an entire freaking rant on this, so I'm going to keep it pretty short and sweet. Even movies don't have the level of idiocy of secrecy compared to the gaming industry like for example the playstation 4 slim there are leaked images of it journalists have gone to actually play the fucking thing yeah, there were videos of yeah, there's, it there's an event coming up so they're going to tell us then yeah but the thing is Not also, just tell us before for no, lol yeah but the thing is also they are refusing to admit it's even real my point being people have played it people have used it there are videos of it there's a retailer that for a short time was actually selling it it came up on ebay they even went to cex right they took i can't remember who it was but someone went with a console to cex just out of curiosity and it even has an entry for the playstation 4 slim on cx's own website and sony are still refusing that it's real my point being all they ha should say is yes it's real we're not going to talk about it yet done but instead, they're trying to DMCA YouTube videos and control the message. It's too late. And Sony are not the only company that does this type of stuff. To be fair to Microsoft, I will give them credit in one major respect with the Scorpio. When the Scorpio was leaked, which it was before the event, before that Phil Spencer went on stage and announced it formally, they didn't have to do that. But what he did is he was like, you know what? We're just going to make um, lemonade out of the lemons. We're going to A, turn the fact that Sony are going to put out the Neo. And B, we're going to just get ahead of it, announce it, and, and use... And use the excitement to um, to uh, carry on, basically. Yeah, sorry about that very excited beeping outside. I'm not really sure what was going on No, there. it sounded like a carnival, apparently. Yeah, just on the motorway. Why not? Yeah, but yeah. So that's I. I, know. I don't understand why Sony won't just say, "Look, it's real," but that's it. I, I, that's what I'm saying. They should just admit it, even if they don't want to give any details. 
about pricing. They don't want to give the details about anything else. Just admit that it's real. Because otherwise, you come across as the bad guy because it shows that you're trying to bully members of the press. But even if members of the press, like Eurogamer, who apparently received legal advice to take down the video, first of all, Sony really can't do that much technically. And the video, and even if they well, could... We don't know that it was Sony. There's some speculation that the, the console they saw was stolen, so... Yeah, but the fact is, it doesn't matter because the video was mirrored a thousand times over by that point. Yeah, but how how often have we seen that companies are so behind the times that they refuse to accept that once something's out on the internet, you cannot get rid of it ever. It's done. That's why, for example, with Pokemon Uranium, they, those guys were really, really smart. They didn't talk about it before it was done. And they deliberately released it on a Friday so that no one would get to it mon till Monday morning. So people had three days to download it and download mirror it. Just, yeah, download, distribute it. So when it. Nintendo took it down on Monday, it didn't matter. too late. Too late, far too late. Because copies out there, and they're still patching it. People have it. There are, you know, it's it's there. You, the internet is you know, forever. It's the same as um, another Metroid Prime Two remake. A while ago, I actually posted on Facebook a link on the RGT Facebook to it because it people put it on Google Drive. People are putting it on. Top. That's what I'm saying. As soon as one person gets another copy of it, it's that over. person can then upload it in fifty different places if they want. Exactly. It's it's so, over at that point. You know. Companies just don't. I get. I get why they have to do it. They have to protect their trademarks and everything like that. But at the same time, it just comes across as really kind of quaint that they think that yeah, they take down the official website, but fifty people have downloaded it by now. Uh, my personal opinion for stuff like that, Nintendo. It, as it's, much, not, it's not Nintendo's fault that trademark law is broken. No, as fuck. but what it is tra Nintendo's fault is that they don't handle it in a smart way. If I were Nintendo, I would have a program where I would submit. A fan-made project, right? And assuming it was done with love and care and effort, it would be that once it was submitted, it would be free to distribute on Nintendo's own products. So you got basically they give you they gave you a license, or the item would be sold at a small fee, and either a small percentage of that money would go to the developer, or and the rest of it go to Nintendo. All of it would go to Nintendo. And then I think people would be so much better off. They'd be so much happier. And for Nintendo as well, it's a win-win on PR. But I don't, you know, I don't know if they can actually do that with trademark law. Valve do. Is. That's what that's what Black Mesa was. That Black Mesa started as a fan-made project, and basically Valve got hold of it. They they found out, and they're like, "Oh, this is awesome! Hey, you know what? We're gonna let you continue doing that." And and. We're going to sell it on Steam Store. And they offered the guys jobs. And also Sega as well did the same thing. Now, Sega fucked up back in the day with... Um, Shining Force? No, forget Shining Force. The, the big one for fan-made projects was uh, Streets of Rage remake or Sorry. I can't remember what the Sorry stood for, but there were basically the Y. There was a Y at the end. But basically, it was um, an amalgamation of all of the Streets of Rage games. So you had different levels and stuff with all of the characters, all the bosses, and it was all remastered. They had, like, awesome level design and everything. And, basically, Sega tried to take it down. But, obviously, as you said, once it's mirrored, it's mirrored. It's over. But, since then, Sega have been better. Not perfect. Sega are not perfect. But, they are doing better when it comes to communicating with the fans and using... No, no, no. Yeah. Nintendo could be way, way better. They could. They could easily be better. But, they're not going to do that because they are so behind the times when it comes to anything to do with internet. Yeah. If there's anything internet based, they're probably so far behind. Pretty much. Anyway, um, we're running quite late time-wise, so let's move on swiftly, shall we? Shall we talk about PS Now? Yeah. Uh, basically, Sony have confirmed that PlayStation Now is coming to PC. I forget the official date. I think it's early September. Don't quote me on that but I'm pretty sure it's early September and basically means that obviously if you've got your PC, you've got your PlayStation account you can get your PlayStation Now subscription and play the games on there on your PC, which is pretty awesome it's mostly PS3 games on there but there are some PS4 games on there as far as I recall, I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure there are, last time I checked um, so the first thing I did is see if Bloodborne was on there, sadly it isn't I wonder if it works, because I've not tested it I do wonder if it works with DS4 tool rather than needing to rely on the stupidity of that stupid dongle. 
What do you mean? DS4 tool allows you to emulate the PS4. Yeah, yeah I know what DS4 tool is. What do you mean the dongle? Because they're doing a dongle, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm sure the program is not going to know the difference between a DS4 tool dual shop and one with a dongle. I think it's just the dongle is more for people who want just the ease of you plug in the dongle and you set it up and that's done. Your DS4 tool is great, but it's a you know I've had some issues. For example, the Bluetooth doesn't work so great. Um, it for me when I tried it, it worked fine at first, but um, then it for some reason was not recognizing some button presses, so I just kind of went to a wired experience, which is fine. But obviously, some people just don't want to bother fighting around with all that. So I don't see that an issue with them doing the dongle as long as they don't stop you using the DS4 tool, which I don't see how they can even do, to be honest. Because, yeah, I don't see how that would be possible. Well, it's if uh, if PS Now supports it. I've not looked into it, though, so I... I, oh, I don't, they've, they've, they've said that it supports a dongle, so in theory it would support DS4 tool. I've got to admit, though, I'm, I think the PS Now is absolutely fantastic for PC gamers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of rubbish that you have to buy games you already own because they don't want to put backwards compatibility in the PS4, but I'm not going to complain about being able to play PS3 games that I never really got the chance to play because I didn't own a PS3 back in the day. So, I'm not going to complain about that at all. It's pretty awesome, actually. And uh, in a way, it might even support the rumours that they're going to put PC support for PlayStation VR, possibly. Yeah, it probably would. If they're willing to support PC with PlayStation Now, then perhaps they're open to it with PlayStation VR. Now, if Sony was smart, they would also start doing it for Android. Uh, Sorry, not Android, for um, Linux. Yeah, there might be some issues there, compatibility-wise, but... Mm, Well, remember, PS3 and PS4's OS are Linux-based. Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm just saying. Anyway, um... So that's pretty cool. Shall we talk about No Man's Fail? I'm being unique and I'm calling it that, you see. Yeah, No Man's Buy. Um, basically, about a week after it came out... No one's fucking buying it, don't know about No Man's conc- According to Steam Spy and Steam DB, so this is not official figures, but they are usually fairly close to being accurate. But just, you know, have some margin of error here. According to those people, the current, current players on PC are down 90%. Which is... Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, obviously, there is always a decline after launch. People buy it, some people go, eh, and don't play it again. That happens with literally every game. However, it's the sharpness of the decline and how many people... It's like a cliff. Some, you know what? It's actually going to be more interesting in a couple of weeks to see if the numbers pick up, and I'll tell you why. Because the patches are coming out. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's not a patch to remove to replace all the removed content. I was going to say, like, for a lot of people, yeah, it might be the performance, and they might come back if the performance is fixed. There are undoubtedly some people who like the game, but the frame rate is too bad or whatever. But I think a lot of the people as well are. Oh, I was promised this long list of content. Most of it is not here, or is in a very, very stripped down way in comparison to what we were shown. So a few days ago I linked a Reddit thread on the RGT Facebook of the list of everything that was t- either not in the game or is in the game but is extraordinarily bare bones in comparison to what they were promised. Yeah, for example, trading in the game. Yeah, trading is just not as they promised. And they were saying, oh, you can have allegiance with factions and that sort of no, thing. And that's not really true. No, you, you can't. You can be friends with all factions. You won't piss off another faction by allegiance with another faction like you would in most games. No, I mean, for example, massive space wars don't happen, yeah. which they promised. They promised things such as sand planets and certain types of environments. Even the enemies look a lot simpler. Or, you know, the, the creatures look simplified. Okay. Here's, here's a, I'm going to give you a free ticket to a Amazing Chuckles, okay? Okay, no, okay, skip. Go to YouTube after this video, or open another tab, whatever. Put in Swagosaurus Rex. And thank me later. This is amazing. You know how the animals in No Man's Sky are all procedurally generated, right? Yes. Well, basically how the system works is that it takes the head of one animal, the body of another animal, the legs of that animal, the tail of that animal, basically kind of, basically like putting Lego blocks together, essentially. Nothing could go wrong. Uh, and the Swagosaurus Rex is it's incredible. You need to you need to check it out. It's so good. The thing about procedural generation uh, is it never works well, well all the, the time. Well, the thing is, like, procedural generation, like anything else, is a tool that can be used to great effect. For example, Binding of Isaac 
is technically procedurally generated in that the items are procedurally generated and the order of the rooms are procedurally generated. However, the rooms themselves are all crafted by hand. It's the order in which they appear in the layout that is procedurally generated. Same with Enter the Gungeon as well. Yeah. So, there's nothing wrong with procedural generation. I just think the problem was they pretty much relied in almost entirely on procedural generation. Basically. Which has just resulted in some hilarious uh, results. Hmm. So, anyway. I mean, hopefully it bounces back and hopefully eventually all the content they promise is in the game, but I wouldn't. It will be, it's DLC. <laughs> don't worry though, we're going to get it free, apart from he said maybe not. But don't worry though, we'll, we'll get to pay Someone me. needs to tell Sean Murray to stop talking, seriously. Someone at Sony needs to be like, Sean, quiet time. <laughs> the, I don't think he was malicious. No, no, I don't think he was malicious either. I really but, don't. I think he honestly believed all of this stuff would be in the game. But obviously they couldn't, they couldn't get it done. The problem... Uh, like 10 people or something. The issue I have though was while he wasn't malicious, he wasn't telling people the truth. So it was like, even interviews this year, like even quite recently, when people were asking him questions, he was like, yeah. Or he was giving answers which... He was so could, vague and I'm like, Bill, just tell us what the game is. What do you do in the game? Don't give us wishy-washy well, answers. Well, he was, he was asking stupid things like, is it competitive? Uh, so is it multiplayer? Yeah. Is it competitive? Can you, can you compete with other people? You can do if you want, yeah. It's like, what does that mean then? Are you all in a massive federation where you can compete with one another? I or, know, I know. Uh, it's like, but no, reality is it you can just compete with one another who could compete the bloody game the fastest. No, I know. I mean, I, I, I genuinely don't believe he was being malicious or lying deliberately, but he should have stopped talking. He out Molyneux Molyneux. He yeah. really did. He is, a no, he is now a new synonym for disappointment and sadness. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so instead of it's all coming up Molyneux, it's all coming up Murray. Yeah. It's a new one. <laughs> yeah, basically. Oh, dear. All right, so we are running fairly late, so I'd say we should wrap up with... Do, do, do. Resident Evil 7. He says, because you, if you could hear my cursor keys. Yeah, me, he's, like, he's telling you, like, we've got a notepad file of all the topics. And he's like, this one, this <laughs> one. Kata, kata. Kata. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. Thank you. <laughs> That's going to be really unpleasant for the listeners, I'm just saying. I'm sure they're fine. If it annoys you, it's probably worth it to them. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not sadistic like you, Paul. Well, they can't. We can't all be perfect. But yeah. let's move. Let's stop talking about your imperfection. Talk about myself. Yeah. Anyway, basically, the ESR, ESRB rating for Resident Evil Seven leaked a few details about the story and the main character. And I do say a few. They're not like, oh my god, it's about Umbrella or whatever. It's about a guy called Ethan who is looking for his wife and there's this mysterious family in this mansion and um, it also confirms that there's going to be combat which Capcom have already said multiple times that it's not going to be an outlast or amnesia where you can only run it away. It wouldn't work. It no, would not they, work. They have outcome. said repeatedly that there's going to be combat but people were still concerned I guess for some reason so... Um, this pretty much confirms it. Yeah, there's well, combat. Well, to be fair, once Murray starts going on stage... It's a bit difficult to really take developers' claims seriously. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I know. I mean, Capcom are not exactly angels, but they're not going to tell us there's combat in a Resident Evil game and then as soon as we play it, it's obvious there's not combat. I mean, yeah. Well, they told us there was not going to be any paid DLC in Street Fighter, and there was. <laughs> they told us it wasn't going to be part of the shit online, and we found out there was one person developing it. So... <laughs> Oh, so I'll get into that. We've been here for ages. Yeah, pretty much. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely going to be combat. It's... There's definitely going to be DOWs of some description. I will say, though, on a serious note, the Resident Evil teams, I actually think they've got some real talent behind them. Like, the Resident Evil teams are pretty damn yeah, impressive. Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually played any of the demos, um, but from what I've seen online, it looks really promising. It looks really, really good. And I'll, everyone's like, oh, it doesn't look like Resident Evil. And I'm like, doesn't it, though? It does. Just because it's first person doesn't mean it's not Resident Evil. It does look like Resident Evil. And they've said the demo is like a teaser. It's not indicative of what's actually going to be in the game. You know, it's possible 
that when Resident Evil 7 comes out, I'm going to have a new favourite horror game. But, that may be short-lived, given Outlast 2... I was going to say, Outlast 2 is out in, like, March or April or something and, like that. And? 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 Yes? Resident Evil 2. Remake. They haven't actually said when that's out. Yeah, I said new favourite, as in, it, I'm not really putting a date on it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Resident Evil 7 <laughs> might be out next year, but I doubt it. Mm, hopefully. I, mean, I hope we at least get a trailer for A3. I'm hoping we get a bloody trailer for RE2. That's what I mean. No, you said 7. Well, I meant RE2. Well, okay. Well, you didn't really clarify. Well, I meant RE2. Okay. 7 is out in February, so we're not going to get any trailers uh, That's why I was A3. looking at you kind of confused. No, no, no. I meant Resident Evil 2 because we haven't seen anything from them since they announced that they're doing that. But I doubt it'll be out next year. I hope it is, but I doubt it. <laughs> Because if they're having to remake the whole thing from scratch, it's a lot of work to go into that. Speaking of which, did you happen to ever play Goldeneye? Yes. On the N64? Yes. Did you happen to play multiplayer? No. So you didn't really play Goldeneye then? So I played the game. So anyway, having not played Goldeneye, you should check out Source... Would you care to tell me what that is? It's GoldenEye, um, remade in the Valve Source engines, Source 1 of course, but it's only in the multiplayer levels, and it's up to version 5.0, so it's looking really good. I haven't tried it since like maybe version 3, so I might have to give it another shot. Is it free, yeah? Yeah. I imagine that certain people would have probably issues if they started. Oh, I was just checking. Just checking, you never know. But I'm really hoping they'll do this, the single player because on a serious note, the single player was really good. The first few levels. Yeah. I mean, I played Carp against... Not Carp. Uh, Although they did actually technically remake it themselves, the developers. Um, they had Daniel Craig in it. Yeah. Um, no, I did, I did play against some friends. That's not really the multiplayer though, I'd say. But it was fun. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously it wasn't online. So. No, no, it wasn't. It was couch co op. Yeah, it was well, pretty awesome. Co op, you know what I mean. Do you know the best weapon on those games? Okay. Looking at the other person's screen. I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> it's like, the thing is, though, you, everyone did it. That's uh, the thing. Like, oh, no, he's got the golden gun. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, basically, James Stewart and I used to play all the time was Nightfire on the GameCube. Never heard of it. It's re- it's another James Bond game. Ah. It's really good online. There was like one level which is a snow level. I can't remember what it's called, but um, it's really good back in the day. And all you would hear is like, <laughs> "What's that?" And it was like this missile that you could control. Oh, there was. I used to have Perfect Dark on the N sixty four, and in that there was a missile where like. When you used it, it went to the first person perspective, and it literally was just like you could like this. That's exactly the same as Nightfire. And, um, Literally just like tell it like go down turn down hallways and like find the other person. It was great. Like, Hello there. Yeah. I'm a missile. <laughs> it was pretty great, I'm not gonna lie. Although what we what we had a rule though. Um the rule was you could not use the missile unless you couldn't find one another for a period of I think it was two minutes. Or the if one person if it was even you couldn't use it. And if all three of you are alive, you couldn't use it. So let's say there's only two people left. There's only a few minutes left in the game, and you're pretty even. Then you can use it. But otherwise, like if it's pretty even, and you know you're all close quarters, then you couldn't. That type of thing. Right, right. So it's just kind of like house rules, I guess. Yeah, it's basically it wasn't real rules, but it was like if you didn't do it, then everyone would gang up on you next, <laughs> next game. Okay, fair enough. Well, we are overrunning a bit this week, so should we wrap it up there? Is there anything else you want to throw in there? No. Okay. Well, uh, as always, guys, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Pretty much.